Hey everybody, it's The Trout, and welcome to The Trout Show. Thanks for joining us today. Stop me if you've heard this one before. You want to play bass guitar in a band, a punk band, but there's only two things stopping you from doing it. Number one, you don't know how to play bass. Number two, you don't even have a bass guitar. Well, that didn't stop our guest today, Hannah, from Stockholm, Sweden, that said, I want to do both, let me try it. So what did she do? She answered a Facebook ad that said they needed a bass player in a punk band. And they asked her those two questions. Do you play bass? Do you even have a bass guitar? And she said no to both. But it didn't stop her from what she wanted to do. And now she plays in a successful punk rock band in Sweden. I think you'll love the story because the social media person is a marketing expert becoming a punk rock bass guitar player. So before we get to that story, remember, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. It's much appreciated. So up next, the gal that didn't know how to play guitar and now is playing bass guitar in a punk rock band in Stockholm. That's next on The Trout Show. You know, I've uh, all, always listened to punk rock. I've okay. been touching heavy metal and metal, some some of that. Um, but for me, like punk rock is the ultimate high. So I guess that that's what I want to hear every day when I wake up. And that's what I put on. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, it's the best antidepressant there is. Uh, punk rock okay, is I got it. All right. yeah. So tell and me about I, it. No, go ahead. Keep going. Keep going. No, just like if I, if I'm angry and I want to get angry, punk rock is there. If I'm happy or I want it to be happy, punk rock is there. Like always, it's always when I need it. What were you doing before you were you playing an instrument before you started playing bass? Um, you know, I've I've had piano lessons when I was ten, but I hated it, uh, so I I just quit after a, a year or so. And I picked up the acoustic guitar in my teens, just mainly chords, basically because I was annoyed by the the guy at the party, you know, always wanted to play the guitar and, <laughs> and he didn't know any songs and he couldn't do any requests. And he was like, let's play Wonderwall again. And I was like, I can do this better. I have to do this better. And uh, I started playing and um but that was it. I mean, I just, I knew all the chords, but I never like used the, never picked anything right. or. So, um, so what happened was I just saw an ad on Facebook. Um, a band was looking for a bass player and I just thought to myself, I want to be in a band. Uh, maybe I could try out. And for me to have an idea and to go through with it is a very short span, okay? I don't have a lot of patience. So I just right. immediately replied and uh, told them, I, I was completely honest. I was like, I don't know how to play. And they were like, do you even own a bass? And I was like, I don't own a bass. Okay, <laughs> next step, find a bass. And so I just wrote on Facebook, like, does anyone have a bass that I know? <laughs> That's hilarious. And my neighbor uh, actually said, I have a bass that in my basement, basement. Yeah, I got and, it. Um, and I borrowed his bass and I just like sit, sat down for a night or two and then went to try out and I got the gig. And I didn't know anything. Um, so I think that I got the gig because I uh, we really hit it off. Uh, and you've been a, in a band, so you know how important that is. Yep. If you don't hit it off, you can't sit in a car with someone for like six or nine hours. You don't want you don't want to have a band where two people can't sit next to each other in a car. Because you and can't that, do it on stage. It's the same no. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And and because uh, I've had that happen, and and it's like uh, so. I I think that was why I got the gig because bass I didn't know anything about. And uh, just, uh, I think two months after I started playing, we went, went into the studio and I was so nervous. Oh man, because I'd never even heard myself because I didn't know an amp. So basically like I tuned down, I turned down the volume on the rehearsals and I was like, how is this gonna sound? And then I, I heard myself play for the first time in that studio and I was like, this was better than I thought it would be. It's, it's, it's really sucky, but it, it's better than I thought it would be. And then just after three months or four months, we went up on stage for the first time. So I just guess I'm kind of that type of person that throws myself into uh, situations. And I was like, 
to say yes before I immediately regret it and <laughs> lose the confidence totally. Happens so all the what time. were you doing with your life? Were you, were, I assume you were working or doing something, were you? I've been working with marketing for 15 years, okay. uh, dig, digital marketing. So uh, maybe that's why I'm, I know how to tell a story and I know how to like post on social media. So you found me through social media. I, I right. think that's a little bit of a, you get a bit damaged when you've worked with something for that long. You can't just post anything. Um, so um, I started this Instagram account um, about the same time I started this band and it just immediately grew out of proportions. Uh, it's still like, uh, it's still, it's not huge for someone else perhaps, but for me, it's like, I understand how, how, how does yeah. it happen? What well, now that you've told me that I think back about your Instagram posts, they're, they're clever. You know, they're mm -hmm. not just like, Hey, I got, I mean, when you got the new base, Mm. And you unpacked it. Yes. I mean, I'm sitting there going, I don't know why, but I just want to see what she's got. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I've seen other people, but, but I want to know what she's so excited about this. Let's see what she's getting, you know? And it's I'm like, always excited about the new base. <laughs> That's my problem. <laughs> so, so then I thought, well, um, okay, then I want to start watching you, you know, it's kind of like, you know, but th then your posts are so cl they're, they're clever, which obviously that's why, because you have the experience of doing it, you know, well, and, and when you did your job, or if you're even still doing it, or what kind of, was it businesses you helped market or just everybody that you helped market on, on social media? I've done everything, man. Um, I, I mean, basically everything. When I started in digital marketing, I just put up Facebook pages for people because they didn't know how to do it. Right. And like put up Facebook uh, profile images because they didn't know. Yeah. It's, that was so early. That was when I started. And now like I, I can do, can do basically anything when it comes to digital marketing. Um, and what I've been working with mostly recently is like the data analyst part of it. Like how, how do you analyze a, a campaign and how do you, um, what, what, uh, how do you sell your, uh, business further? And I've been doing that for an agency. I've been working on several agencies, but I, yeah, I've been doing this in very many, I mean, many roles and many, I've been a social media manager, search and an expert. Um, I've been web editor. I've been, um, uh, like a social media, uh, advertiser. I've done pretty much everything that you can do um in so you in, so you have your own kind of your own you you have your own schedule i mean just, <laughs> you can right? say that uh but if i have customers I mean, you have, you have projects you got to work on you have time sensitive things but you still yeah. if you say i want to go hey we're rehearsing today at three okay i'll work on that when i get home or i'll do it in yeah. the morning yeah so that that yeah. makes it, so you have it's it's, it's a hybrid kind of thing where some customers want me to go go to their office some customers right. Fine with me staying at home because I don't even have room for me or so I mean it's it's um it does it depends on the customer but that's what I've been doing for like the past two years are they are they all in your country or are you doing something outside your country mm, I've I have I've had like international companies that I've been doing work for I think the most uh the most the, the hardest one was actually for the a Finnish company because Finland uh is Sweden's neighbor mm -hmm. and so you would think that they are very similar but that it's a, it's oh, a completely no. different language and every post that you make has to be reduced in terms of letters because they put so much letters in saying one sentence oh it's like German uh, it's like German yeah, yeah. Like you, you have to <laughs> I mean yeah. the copy is not transferable at all you have to redo everything for Finland um so that that's um yeah I've, I've been doing uh, international uh, marketing uh, as well. Yeah. Your English. Did you start learning that when you were young? Did they teach you at school? Yes, they teach you at school in Sweden. And I've been to the States a couple of times. Um, Where did um, you go? Uh, Los Angeles. Um, 
New York. I've been to Texas, but I, I honestly missed out on Dallas. I, I saw Houston and I saw um, in Austin. Were you in Austin? Austin, yeah. yeah. And I saw, what was that? It was, it was a third city. I can't recall, but it was like a Venice type of scenery, like with the uh, San Antonio. Uh, yeah. San Antonio. Yeah. yeah San Antonio. It's, it's, it's got the uh, river walk yeah. that you go through. And Texas is huge. Oh my God. I, you don't get how huge it is before you go there. I mean, I was amazed about it. Like when we were driving through Texas and you're like, this is the most vast country I've ever seen in my life. I thought, I'm, I'm thinking in retrospect, it doesn't look that big on the map, but it's huge. <laughs> well, it, it takes, if you're down, if you want to drive from where I am to down, as far as south as it's it's a 12 it's a 10 hour drive yeah i mean so and like if you're down there and want to drive all the way to the other oh, it's like a 12 in it's, in, it's, in the in a yeah. state it has has the the thought of playing south by southwest entered your mind yet you know um, we'd love to come but it's uh it's expensive to get a new we we don't want to lose money to to go no, no, play no no no, no. So and, I think that when people, because people have been writing to us a long time, like come to, come to Peru, come to, <laughs> you know, like come to Brazil, come yeah. to stay. Sure. Like, yeah, Send me sure. money. Send me yeah. money and I'll, I'll be there. Why are, we, why are the transfers so we can get all of us on board a plane that costs like 10 grand? Yeah. And then, yeah. yeah, you know, it's a big machinery and you have to have, like a booking company uh, with you if you come from Europe over to the States. It's not, you don't want to go there and and uh, lose all your money. Um, well, you may want to do that, but- uh, Well, it depends us, on the situation. Uh, yeah, I mean, South by Southwest, and I've had people come to me and go, can you get me in? No. I mean, it's still, yeah. it's still you apply, I think right now for next year. I think it's going on mm -hmm. right now. I think you have to have it in by August. Everybody in Europe dreams about coming to America because that's where all the big bucks are. So that's that's part of it. But the other part of it is the exposure. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I understand when people like your band, they just think, well, why don't you come to Rio de Janeiro? Or why don't you know? It's like, mm -hmm. now if I want to come to Denmark, that's a little bit closer, you know, for yes. you or or Norway or something like or that. Germany or Germany. Or Germany, that's all, you know, it's relatively close hmm. okay so we digressed a little bit so you digital marketing and then you go in and say i'm going to play bass and they and they put you in and is this the same band from the beginning you're in the same band you started with no so okay. um so what happened was we've been playing for a year when COVID hit so it's same basically same story like you right. uh so i was immediately put on pause and during the COVID, we decided we wouldn't continue with the band. And so me and the singer from that band, which is uh, Jesse, uh, is her name. And so Jesse and I, we talked about starting a new band, right? So uh, at the same time, I I uh, was single. So I, I downloaded the Tinder app. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I swipe right on a guy called Anders, and he's now our guitarist. So like on our first date, I was like, do you want to play guitar in my band? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. And then so Tinder was a big part of forming our band uh, called Wrong Band. And me and Anders are now engaged. So I guess that went well as well. I guess congratulations yeah. in order. Thank you. So we um, we are uh, we started Wrong Band together, me, Anders and Jesse. And then we had a drummer called John for a while. But same story like with with we talked about earlier that band members uh, different stuff happened and we um, he didn't want to continue playing with us because he wanted to like play other types of music like blues and more of like a journey type of rock right um uh and so we have been trying to find a drummer for wrong band for 
a long time, but John has always like been there for us with gigs and he was recently on tour with us as well. But we're cool. still missing a drummer in, in wrong band. And it's been like two years, I think. Drummers are hard to find. Drummers and keyboard players. Actually, bass players are hard to find. Like, uh, hey? like Yeah, uh, I always felt that keyboard players are hard to find. Oh, and and um, lead guitar players like me, ah, uh, they're everywhere. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I just had another email from somebody come join our band come and you know we need to i got uh, I just, you know that i don't want to go through the hassle i guess it's certain that because i like what i'm doing mm. so as you all right so now that you had the band what's the name of the band wrong band that's it's but it's called, not it's called wrong band okay but if that's not what's on instagram is it is that um, okay? it, yeah i have two bands okay Oh, there yeah. you go. So that band was called Wrong, it's still called Wrong Band because it's still active. And uh, then we decided we wanted to play punk rock in Swedish. So we recently formed a Swedish punk rock band called Krikstigen, which is done, uh, which just released our e first EP and it sold out instantly. And we're still like in awe of what did you guys want to buy this? <laughs> But uh, we're doing a third batch, uh, which is come, which is going to be available from August of this EP that we, uh, which it has four songs on it. Okay. Did, hmm. So, who's your favorite? I mean, who do you listen to? Who who would you like to? Who's your favorite bass player? I mean, you obviously have people you look up to. Who is it, or who are they? Um. Oh, that's so hard. But uh, I'd go with uh, either Matt Freeman from Rancid or Jay Bentley from Bad Religion. I wish I had more like female role models. I, there, there, there's a, a band from Sweden called The Baboon Show, which I want to give like some exposure. They're huge in in Europe. Uh, I don't know if they've played in the states, but uh, they have a, an amazing bass player called Frida. So shout out to Frida. You know, and, and that's one of the reasons I'm talking to you, because there's not that yeah. many women in it. I mean, it's not. No, it, it, I, I guess not in punk rock. I mean, there probably are, but sorry if I haven't found you yet. You could just DM me and say, hey, I'm <laughs> I'm here. You should listen to my my music because, uh, yeah, they're they're um, yeah, the, the bands that I grew up with, uh, I've always listened to bass, but even before I started playing bass, like bass is so important to me in, in music. And uh, yeah, so when I started playing, I didn't know what to do at first. I started watching other people and I had like a few lessons from, from here, you know, here and there just started, but not too much, not too, too much to interrupt my own style of playing. I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I want to still continue to be sure and not someone else, like do things my way. Um, but still like lessons have done uh, a great deal for me, even though there haven't been that many. I, I think though that if, if the longer you play, you pick up people's style. It's just the way it mm. is. Because if you listen to anybody in any band, you know you're going to start playing and going, "Oh, I didn't think about that. I want to mm. throw that into my own style." So it's a it's a a big collaboration of a whole bunch of people. What's funny to me is what you said earlier is when mm -hmm. you do hit some kind of success, it's kind of like, what, how'd this happen? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it's because people like you, they like your band. I mean, you know, it, it is amazing to me, Hannah, how many famous people I've talked to that never talk about how good they are. And sometimes sit back and go, I just don't get it. And I go, because you don't suck. I mean, you're, yeah. really good. you're good at what you do. So obviously you guys have found something over there that people want to hear, which yeah. is if you got that already, that's pretty freaking cool as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, now, now that you cool. play, how many, so do you guys still rehearse or you just, just play gigs ready to, um, I mean, obviously with, you go in the studio, but. Yeah. With wrong band, we just play gigs because, uh, yeah, we, we, we've had a lack of a drummer situation for a long time. So basically, and you know, with it's 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 come to the 
the place when you don't have to prepare as much mm -hmm. uh, you know when you're just so it just runs so smoothly um and you just know everything by in your know, muscle memory and yeah. then uh, Kriegstigen is a brand new band so we're rehearsing a lot and we're writing songs because we want to like we have a dream about like making a, a real record and not just an EP like a real big vinyl uh, like old school uh, yeah. love and that's uh, that's been a dream of mine for for a long time and, and the other guys I think as well so it's just uh, writing songs and we're rehearsing every week every Thursday so we're going to rehearse tomorrow do you do you have a standard place obviously you do do you have a place you mm -hmm. can just leave your stuff and just go and just bring your we don't your leave our stuff but it's like it's fully equipped and it's uh it's uh, via census so it's like uh, Sweden has this kind of thing where you can have uh, a study circle we call that a study circle mm. I don't know if you have this a similar thing in, in the states but it's uh, it's actually government funded mm. uh, so if you are three or more people you can basically start studying anything together and we study study music together which is a common thing so we get we get some contributions and we have like a uh, place to play um it, it, our contributions basically go to like the place to play like the right. place to, of rehearsal okay um but uh, after that it's not that expensive it would have been so much more expensive if we would have rented something like oh yeah studio of, space of, is uh, not cheap yeah yeah, yeah. So we're we're doing doing that study circle thing via census, and it's uh, it's been working really well for 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 us. Um, but we're we're gonna have like a little mini break during the summer just to, you know, sit in the sun and and swim it, swim in the ocean. Yeah, because it's you don't have a lot of sun for very long. You have a short summer. I'm very pale, <laughs> except for in the summer. Some <laughs> then I'm. I'm well, you're so far farther. north. Not it's funny either. though that you want to go to the vinyl side mm -hmm. because i've always loved the digital side because i went through the vinyl stage and mm. and people are buying more vinyl now but it takes i the last time i talked to somebody I went with a, was a musician that was going vinyl the band i think it said was 10 months or almost yeah. a year to get a vinyl because there's so few people doing it that when you do it it's like a year later before you actually get your copies which is, yes. is strange. Uh, but the other thing too, and I don't know about Sweden, but I assume so um, in Europe, they say they're still using CDs. Yeah. Not over here. It's all streaming. We have actually our first. I saw that. So how do you pronounce that name? Krikstigen. Oh, wow. It doesn't mean like it, it directly transfers to war path, but it, it has a different meaning in Swedish, where it's more like we are on we are on a war path and we're angry together more than like war path. You know what I so mean? So you've got an alligator, a rabbit and a bear. Oh, and a duck. Yes. I saw it on uh, Instagram. We all, all of the singles have like the same animals. So it's like, it's our uh, singer, Jessie, who's uh, been doing the cover art. And she's been done, doing that for wrong as well. She's amazing at doing all of that uh, drawing. And I can't draw at all. I can barely write my own name. <laughs> <laughs> People can't read what I write. <laughs> have you been asked for an autograph yet? I ha We have actually. And I mean, sign. we've been signing these records and it's, it's still weird that people want us to scribble onto something and then send it to them. Uh, but yeah. You got to have kind of a cool autograph, you know, kind of a, it's kind of, you know, or something that people go, what is that? Well, that was Hannah. <laughs> it looks like I can't uh, read it. <laughs> it's like, this is like, this is my autograph. It's not. Well, like, see, that's pretty simple. Yeah. Now, hold it it back up and let me see, back long. it up a little bit. Let me see all the other names. Let me see the other names. Okay. The other names, this is a dedication to our friend called Papa Princessa. He wanted it. So Jesse has a rabbit. She always does a rabbit. So Jesse okay. is like your path. Okay. And this is who's, um, who's that with the, the thing no, right, right right where your right hand is? With uh Anders. this is uh, Adrian's and this is Anders. So he smiley face, and mm -hmm. the other one puts kind of a, a accent mark over the name. Yeah, he, this is a drummer and this is the guitarist. Okay. And so 
there are other guitarists Anton hasn't signed these so I can't send them away yet I'm I'm gonna have bring him to him tomorrow so, so what is your your dream now I mean you you have a lot of here's the thing I already know about you first off you're a mm -hmm. business person yeah I can, I can tell you if I went to musicians and said tell me how to use an excel spreadsheet they would go what what's that i won't even know what that is they may have heard of it they won't know what it is you're smart you're you're a business person because you've already been in business which really helps in the music industry mm -hmm. because you kind of can run the business side of it and then the other part of it is you've already figured out kind of where you want to go in the short term but what's your big dream I mean, if, and I'm talking about Hannah's big dream, not necessarily the band, but maybe the band too, but what's your, what would be your big thing to do? Have you ever thought about it? Um, the, the weird thing is like, I've had dreams, but they've already been fulfilled. Do you wow. know what I mean? Wow. And, that, and that's a luxury problem, I know, but it, uh, cause I was like, I, I can't tell you right now it's a secret but like one of the things that i really wanted was like handed to me the, the week before this week so like it was a, a big check in the box for me um but sure like one of the things that i would love to do would be to go on a tour in, in germany that would that would be oh, wow. that's a dream of mine yeah. Uh, I know you bands that have been doing that and they say Germany is super nice and they all love punk rock and they also like really love Sweden and and uh, that's where I that's I would love to go there and just be on on a tour and not necessarily be doing that sleeping in the van kind of thing because <laughs> I feel like I'm past that yeah. so basically like live in live in a I don't know. A B and B in a, in a or you know something like that. Yeah, yeah. whatever. It doesn't have to be a hotel. I'm not yeah. fancy like that, but just have a, have my own room and I'll just uh, be driving through Germany and like doing shows, and meeting meeting Germans. So yeah. I want to do music uh, on my terms, and I don't want to be like you said. I don't want to be in a cover band. Um, I don't want to be doing covers just to make a living. I don't want to be a product for someone else like because i've been asked to do that like can you join this this group um because of i don't know because uh because i'm a girl and i play bass and that would probably look cool you fit their they fit their marketing skills yeah That's what and i don't want to do that i want to make yeah. my own music i want to be performing and i i don't have like a huge dreams uh with within music but just it would be cool to do the the Germany tour. So let's uh, let's hope that happens someday. Have a good evening. All right. You too. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for this. All right. See you. Bye bye. bye.